Thank you very much, and thank you for the presentation, and thanks for inviting me here today. Well, as you said, I'm a pediatrician, and soon uh, also a neonatologist. I have my research field in antibiotic resistance uh, in neonates, mainly in the country of Ecuador, but also here in Sweden. But today, uh, I will first tell you that I have no conflicts of interest, but I'm here today uh, as a member uh, of the pediatric team of Life Support Foundation just to uh, cheer my uh, experiences of the work with Life Support. Um, two and a half years ago, we started the pediatric team of Life Support and we were a group of pediatricians, neonatologists and um, pediatric nurses and neonatal nurses that work together. We have three main areas where we work and it's first the pediatric emergency care training and the neonatology field and as well research. So um, we need to know why do children die and as Dr. Maitland and Dr. Idis have been talking about, uh, the child mortality uh, is something uh, we need to um, know which are the main killers, why do, uh, does children die. Most of them are due to infectious disease and as projected from 1990 and to 2020, it's pretty much the same causes and we know that these causes are preventable diseases and uh, about four to five percent of the children dying under the age of five are dying within their first month and that's the neonatal mortality and we know that actually half of these children are dying during their first 24 hours. But global under five mortality has um, decreased. These years uh, it's a percentage of 53% uh, that the under five mortality dropped from 90 to 43 between uh, 1990 and 2015. But still around 5.9 million children less than five years die every year. And we know that these children are dying uh, in the poor countries or in the poor areas of the middle income countries. For example, a child in the sub-Saharan Africa is 10 times more likely to die before the age of five compared to children in high income countries. So comparing Tanzania and uh, Sweden, we heard some of the health indicators of Dr. Iset, but I'll tell you that the child mortality in Sweden, for example, is three per live uh, per thousand live births, comparing to in Tanzania, which is 48. But we could luckily say that uh, the numbers from 2012, the Tanzanian number was 52, so they are doing a good job. Maternal mortality ratio is almost like in Malawi, it's um, 100 times um, higher than uh, in Sweden. And you see the doctors per 10,000 inhabitants in Sweden compared to Tanzania, and as well the GDP per person spent on health and how the health budgets per person is organized in Sweden versus Tanzania. So now we know why the children are dying. We know the health indicators of the country of Tanzania. So what is needed? Well, we know that prevention to uh, prevent these infectious diseases like clean water, hygiene, immunization and mosquito nets will prevent a lot of the infectious disease. Family planning, antenatal care to, to reduce premature birth and the complications with maternal maternity as well. Triage assessment and treatment, something that we know is really important and when it comes to treatment we need a good primary care we need well-functioning referral systems and as well good critical care at health facilities. And that is what uh, Life Support has been working with these years. And as we heard before, a lot, most of the deaths um, um, occur within the 24 hours of admission and the countries 
most of um, most hospitals in low-income countries actually don't have a good triaging. And uh, Dr. Molinier reported in 2006 that implementation of a triage and emergency care protocol, ETAT, decreased the inpatient mortality from 10 to 18 to 60, 6 to 8 in Malawi. So knowing all this, uh, the pediatric team of LSF um, conducts courses both in Sweden and in Tanzania and as well train trainers in order to have their own courses uh, at their hospital of Murumbili. We also have workshops uh, in the neonatology field and I will also tell you a little bit of the research that the pediatric team are conducting in Murumbili. So this is a photo of a course in um, Dar in the east of 2015. We had 30 participants, 15 uh, doctors and 15 nurses uh, those in the course and we uh, worked mainly with the guidelines of the WHO ETAT emergency triage assessment and treatment which uses a systematic approach to the ABC. We have group sessions mainly to, to work with the triaging and uh, we also had skill stations with um, working with the A, B and C, where the um, uh, A, of course, free airways, how to position the, the child and with the B uh, to ventilate with their own amber bags that they were had at their hospital and their own wards. And in the C section, we were discussing the new fees trials and how to to relate to the fluid dose uh, boluses and uh, it was a really interesting uh, discussions that we had uh, together with with the teams from Tanzania and um, we also uh, worked a lot with CRM crew resource management uh, to talk about the team. What is a team? What is a team member? What's the responsibilities for the team members? And uh, red flags, communicating with closed loops. And um, I would say that was quite a challenging uh, part of the course because they're very, the, they don't speak very loud and most of the time we just had to tell them to speak up and after a while they actually looked you in the eyes and they could touch you on the shoulder and they could have a good communication but that was something that they really needed to to um, um, practice on and um, we also had uh, scenario um, situations where we we discuss discussed why did the ch child die was this a b or c problem so they could come up with their own solutions and was this a logistical problem and, and this different word and uh, there was really nice discussions that came up at uh, that course. Okay, what happened now? Back in Sweden, the teams uh, come to the ward and auscultate and focusing mainly on triaging at the emergency department and how the triage is on the ward, which patient to run first, and to take parts of our um, communicating uh, with uh, our SBAR system um, to have a good, um, effective communication. As well, they spent three days on a on a course uh, at our Center for Advanced Medical uh, Simulation Training Center. Camst, and they had the same uh, course as we had for our own facilitators when we do the Camst courses. And they take turns to lead the sessions and uh, to lead the scenarios, to do the reflecting part, and to do the observation. So that was a uh, some very good days together with a lot of learning. The course is uh, something that we need to have with this um, uh, planning for the next courses in in Dar, where our colleagues from Tanzania will hold the course and they will have some supervision uh, or um, 
well, supervision, you could say. And for that, we um, give them as much as good um, tip we can. And uh, how do you design a good course? And for whom are the, the course going to be? Which is your target group? And what are the learning outcomes? And we talk a lot about leadership and how to be a team member in the in the setting that they're working with, with a maybe different hierarchy than we're used to. So we learn a lot, and they uh, it's really a bilateral um, learning um, while we have these courses as well. The teaching me methods and how um, uh, how we can have a good pedagogical theory with a, a safe environment for the course members and to do the reflecting parts and uh, observational parts together. Uh, the neonatal workshops. Um, we, we talk about the preterm birth with the, with the healthcare workers from the neonatology ward. For the moment there is two neonati neonatologists in Tanzania, which um, both work in Mwimbili. One of them are, is retired, and uh, the rest of the doctors working at the neonata neonatal ward are pediatricians. And um, we have good uh, workshops with that. We talk about the, the complications to prematurity and, and also uh, about a lot of the morbid morbidity of the premature babies. And the fact of that 50% of the babies before the gestation of the week of 32 uh, actually die in low-income countries, there's a totally different um, uh, setting than, than we are used to. And we have the interactive sessions where we work with neuroprotection, how to position the, the premature baby in order to, to protect them from auto-regulated um, for example, high blood pressure, high, high um, heart frequency, which could lead to IVH, intraventricular hemorrhage, and so on. We um, talk about keeping warmth, protecting against hypoglycemia, hypothermia, which are very stressful for the newborn baby. And uh, the golden hour, how do we support the baby during the first hour of life? And the future, we would really like to, to go the same way as the rest of LSF has been doing with uh, supporting a residency in neonatology. And we have uh, had a good talks about uh, that type of collaboration with the Karolinska University's neonatal um, um, team, I would say. And so let's hope that we can keep on working with that um, area as well short about the research projects in, in um, the team pediatrics in Mumbili is first uh, an evaluation of healthcare workers experience of pediatric emergency care training which will start uh, this fall and uh, the second and last one is assessment of the quality of pediatric emergency care as per ABC adherence and barriers to delivery of quality emergency care that will start next spring. And it's actually the resi pediatric residents of Karolinska University Hospital that will take part um, in these studies. So um, the challenges are, I really recognize many of those that uh, Dr. Rhea said was just talking about, but we felt also challenges of do we know the real needs? We haven't just been on the pediatric clinic for two and a half years. We're starting to know the, the colleagues that we're working with, but um, uh, we're not sure that we know exactly what the real needs are. Are there unknown obstacles? Um, how do we keep our team uh, and at the same time make it bigger? Because we want to introduce uh, colleagues from, from uh, Astrid Lindgren to come and join us in this work. Uh, and of course, we, all, we do all this at our spare time. Achievements are two courses that we had in Dar es Salaam, which been um, um, 30 doctors, 30 nurses, and uh, we had nine Tanzanian colleagues coming to Sweden to have the courses that I just talked about. 
And uh, we also had some donations from our hospital with pulse oximeters and literature, literatures and so on. And we got some dolls from the and also some financial support from schools around Stockholm. Uh, engaged pediatric physicians and nurses in Karolinska is, is of course uh, an achievement and uh, that we could uh, uh, actually say that if you're a pediatric resident you could go to to uh, be a, some part of our projects in life support as well for a couple of weeks. The biggest achievements is to see our Tanzanian colleagues come to to uh, our meetings at the pediatric clinic and and present uh, what they think are the the roles of the collaboration and um, yes that's that's really means a lot and that we're building teams at two sides parallel uh, I think that's a very important step in order to to keep the relations and and um, um, show that we are sticking together in this work. Thank you for the attention. I'm glad to answer any questions if you have any.